It's another revisit to the Little Soldering Iron, well, trilogy, I guess, since this is the third video. I've looked at these units before. The first video I showed how to hack it to get a uh, more controlled temperature range. The second video was showing how you could use the button on the front of the previous version to actually program the temperature by putting it into sort of calibration mode. But when I did that, I got a lot of messages saying they've released a new version, it's the B2, and it's you can't do that, and it's a lot simpler inside. Well, this is a B2 version, to the best of my knowledge, and it took me a while to get it. I finally found one in a little, it was the last one on the shelf, the box was open, I checked everything was there, and I wondered, has it been returned as faulty? And yes, this button is not working on it, so we'll have to fix it as well. So let's do a test first. When I clip this on, because that button is jammed in, it just starts powering up straight away. I don't know if this is going to affect its operation, though. But let's give this a test. I'm going to let this heat up, and then we'll see what temperature this is set at by default. So uh, that's assuming it even works. Is it heating? It is heating. Okay, right, tell what, I'm going to pause till this has come up to temperature stabilised, and then I'm going to use this uh, thermometer for soldier irons to actually test it. Yes, it's 12 degrees Celsius in here at the moment. That's quite cosy and warm for my standards. Okay, oh, I can smell it heating up. While it's heating up, I shall apply some solder onto the tip because you should always tin a fresh tip. Okay, dokie. Right, one moment, please. I'm just going to pause and uh, wait for this to just uh, stabilise. It is now green, which means it's come up to temperature, but let's give it some time to stabilise and then we'll do the test. One moment. And we're back, and as always with these, it's running at very high temperature. Watch this. The tip is kind of discolouring, and if I put this on here, I'd normally solder about 360 to 300, uh, well, 350 to 360 degrees Celsius. This is 480 degrees Celsius it's heading for. That's way too high. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, unclip this in the battery. We're going to have to open this and explore it. Right, that is now red hot. I shall pause momentarily while that cools down. One moment, please. The temperature has come down. Let's continue the video by taking this apart. It's worth mentioning this base here has a soldier iron stand that clips in, and it's also got storage for bits. It's quite nice. Oh, and the little uh, sponge thing, but they're not that great. So let's um, take a look. I get the feeling that the reason the button is sticking is possibly just a misalignment under the case. I don't know if there's going to be anything really obvious. We'll find once we've opened it up. But to open up, I'm probably going to have to remove that little solder sponge base. And the sticky label next to the button, that's no great deal. Oh, and this sticky button here, which probably it's probably warnings or something. It usually is. This is my dangerously non-compliant modified VDE screwdriver, which is needed for getting into some narrow holes like this a normal vd screwdriver won't go in so the health and safety executive loves to uh seize those screwdrivers that have been modified like that as being hideously dangerous and then you have to go and buy another one and cut it off again that's because the safety industry is very detached from reality let's see if we can pop this off you can certainly shave bits of the aluminum off is it going to come off? I'm not really too bothered by this. It's not something I'd really use anyway. It's stuck on. But it, oh, there, there it goes. Or was it? Oh, no, it's clipped in, actually. I'm talking crap. It would have come out very easily. Righty ho, let's uh, just pretend that didn't happen. This, I could have heated it up and peeled it off. I may do that. Hold on. I've got my suitable heated pen here. Hot air pen. So generally speaking, I'll just run it over the label. The label is not needed either. So it'll probably be left off by the time I finish this. But I'll, you know, go through the formalities of removing it in a nice manner by heating it up. Right, I'll do. Ugh. Oh, I've a bit off there. Yeah, that was pointless as well. This is going so well. How about now? Oh, there is that sticky label at the back. And it's off. Oh, that is a much smaller circuit board. So here is the... The button works fine, now it's off. I think that was just misaligned. It's a little tactile button. There's the circuit board. Oh, that is so tiny, it's unbelievable. Right. Uh, and this unplugs. 
We've got the four connections to soldier iron. Right, tell you what, I'll take a picture of this. I shall reverse engineer it. Then we'll explore it and we'll see how easy is this to hack. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore and we'll start by looking at the back. Not much to see. I didn't take this connector off because it's got these very big blade connectors. I didn't want to melt the plastic or damage the circuit board because they're going into sort of fairly large sort of ground planes and connection buses. So I just left that on. All that's on the back is basically uh, these same ground planes and a few interconnecting tracks. The bit we're interested in, and I'll zoom down on this, the bit we're interested in is this side. That'll do, actually. Mm, good zoom. Uh, the connection is the soldier iron. We've got the red is the positive, the yellow is the switch negative via this MOSFET, and we've got black and white. That is the RTD device, the resistance temperature detector. And the good news is that it is hackable. And even better news, you don't need to e even open the base. You can literally do it all in the soldier iron itself, as I'll show you later. There's an interesting chip here. Uh, it generates its own 5-volt supply. It's got a regulator in it from the full supply voltage, which is quite high. Uh, it's like, like, say, for instance, it's 5 cells, 4.2 volts, full charge, it's over 20 volts. Um, other things worthy of note, there's the three connections brought on, the negative, the positive, and the uh, thermistor and control pin. Um, and after that, we get a little connector for the interface board not really much more to say um i'll go cut straight to the schematic then because it is a very minimalist design i shall zoom in just a tiny bit more let's see if i can do this disastrously bad no that's good i did actually manage to do a controlled zoom there here's the mystery chip now the chip number is where is it it looks like an m m29 an 100 I typed that into Google, absolutely nothing came up at all. Google did not find anything, like zero. That's unusual. So here are the battery connections at this end. We've got the positive, the negative, and the uh, temperature sensor, plus the uh, the controller inside the battery pack can actually disconnect this thermistor if it wants to actually say, I am flat, you know, I've not got any charge left, and it shuts the system down. The positive goes straight over to the heating element. I've drawn it as a zigzag here. There's a diode across that, just pr presumably for inductive elements, just to protect against uh, the switch-off transients affecting the MOSFET. There is a little capacitor across the MOSFET for extra protection, and there's a sense resistor down here of 0.01 ohm, which uh, is to detect short circuits. If it detects a massive current through the soldier iron, it's detected via this 1K resistor to decouple it from the uh, input, a little uh, filter capacitor, and it will actually shut down if it detects an overload. There's a little circuit board with the green, red, and uh, LED, and the... Uh, switch the push button and they're just a common zero volt and then it's just three outputs via resistors. The resistor in series the button is just for protection of the inputs. Again, it's quite a good design. The supply goes via this 4.7 ohm resistor, which I think is pretty much a fuse really. And it goes down to a coupling capacitor here and then it goes straight into the device. And that is the device's positive supply, but it also generates its own five volt supply in here. Um, the temperature sensing is, it looks a bit complicated, but it's okay. It starts off the 5 volt supply going via a 499 ohm resistor to the uh, resistive temperature detector in the iron, in the uh, soldier iron bit. And then it's got another 499 ohm resistor. And the point of this is that this is permanently connected to 5 volts, which drops slightly when it's uh, on standby. Um, the current, incidentally, is 12 microamps on standby, which is pretty good. But when it wants to actually read the temperature of that, when it's active, it uh, pulls this pin here to the zero volt rail, to negative effectively, and uh, then it, it's got a potential divider that it measures from a tap on that via this 10K resistor for input protection, a filter capacitor, and then it goes to the input, and that's how it measures the temperature. We're doing a little hack. We're basically popping a little resistor in here in the soldier iron itself. Um, the thermistor, when it wants to measure the thermistor in the battery pack or see if it's to enable in the first place, it takes this pin here high. 
That then forms a potential divider via this 10k, the base value of 10k thermistor, which will vary up and down according to uh, the actual temperature. And then it's got this decoupling resistor here from the input and this sort of filter capacitor here. And ag again, when the uh, battery pack wants to indicate that it's low on charge and it doesn't want a load pulled, it can actually pretend that that's suddenly gone high temperature by disconnecting it. And then the unit will actually see that voltage float up really high and it will actually shut off. There is a mystery thing here. I do not know what this is for. When that goes high, to actually activate that thermistor, it also feeds this pin here via 180k resistor and a little decoupling capacitor. I don't know if this is some internal voltage reference that's being activated. I don't know, or a comparator perhaps. It might just be providing an input to a comparator. I don't know because I can't find data on the chip. It just seems this mystery resistor. The other thing it monitors, that 4.7 ohm fusible resistor, uh, it also monitors the voltage across the battery pack itself via a 2 mega ohm resistor and a 300k resistor down here. There's a filled capacitor and then the, it goes to the input so it can actually monitor the voltage. If the voltage is too low, um, it actually just flashes a code on the green LED. But if the voltage was too low from the battery, it would actually know that because it would already be getting the signal from this. Not sure why they do that. I guess it's just maybe to check things are within tolerance. Um, that is it. I've literally described everything that was much faster than the actual reverse engineering. Okay, here is the solder iron and the module. Let's take a look at what I found inside. I did rough a connection in the base unit from here. Uh, oh, incidentally, 52 ohm resistance cold, 182 ohms at its super duper turbo hot setting. Uh, so by adding a resistance here, you can actually uh, skew the way it reads it. That's what I'm doing here. So I put a little uh, high value resistor in and then I've clamped my resistive substitution box across that. Now, I have to say, I think I skewed the readings up but just by having fairly long leads because uh, it, uh, it didn't quite turn out as expected, but I'll show you what happened there. But it gave a rough indication that um, 100 ohms uh, gave a tip temperature of about 300 degrees centigrade once it had stabilised and 10 ohm, 425. So I thought 33 ohm for the closest to what I'd normally use, 372 ohm, uh, would be ideal. But in reality, I would suggest a 22 ohm. And I'll show you how I put that in. We'll get this out of the way. If you open up the iron while it's cold, you can just slip these bits off and unscrew this cover. Then you can slide this out, pushing the circuit board at the back. I'll zoom out. No, I won't zoom out. I'll just keep it as it is. And if you look at the circuit board, it's got four connections. It's got the two red connections, which are the heating element, and it's got the two blue connections coming out, going down to the black and the white, which are the uh, temperature sensing bit. I added a resistor here. See the resistor? Let me zoom down this. And I shall focus on that. I added the resistor with a bit of heat shrink sleeving over it. I put a 33 ohm resistor in. To be honest, I'd recommend a 22 ohm resistor. Or if you want a spicier iron, you could use a 10 ohm resistor. But all I did was take the white wire out because it was the longest. It gave the most room to move. Put in the resistor, uh, put the sleeve over that wire, soldered it on, and then slipped it over and uh, heated up to shrink it on. That is the easiest hack. Now, while we're here, if you pull this back, it shows that the actual iron the ceramic bit has these solder connections on the side. That's quite odd. I want, they'll probably very high temperature, I'm guessing. Not sure. Um, when, if you ever do expose those, make sure you put the sleeve right down and into the circuit board here because it has to go right down to uh, allow it to go back into the housing. To go back into the housing, there is a little slot in here. Pull the cable at the back and it slides back in and you fumble around to find that slot, it drops down. Uh, this is where that would be sticking up too high if you hadn't sat it into the circuit board. Sit this back on again. Put your chosen tip on. Noting that they don't have the little uh, sleeve that some of them have, which is better, pro provides better thermal coupling. Pop it back on and that is your modification made and your iron has been tamed down. Okay, let's zoom back out again. So that 
is it. It's the simplest I've seen. Look at the size of the circuit board. That is ridiculous. It's so minimalist. They've really cut it down. As always, it is set to this ridiculously high temperature to the point that it's going to really damage the bits. You can see the discoloration there. It would have, if you overheat the iron bits, it just causes them to corrode at the end very quickly. So it's better to tame them down. But that is it. And it's nice you don't have to open this bit because uh, that turns out to be quite messy with all the labels and things coming off. But there we have it. Uh, the Lidl, which version? It's a B2 iron. It's a... Uh, quite easy to hack you just basically you can open the iron and with another soldier iron keep in mind this is your traveling portable soldier iron with the battery packs you'd probably have another iron at home i have to mention that because people will say well how am i supposed to soldier it if i you know can't use the iron uh, but uh that um now i've now i've completely forgotten what I'm saying yeah so you uh, can do the hack inside here um and without opening the base, and that is a good thing because uh, opening the base does involve ripping all those labels off. But there we have it. Uh, it's a reasonable enough iron. It works very well, does the job. Um, and as often with these little products, it's very affordable. Just needs that little hack to make it perfect.